Do you remember, when Bootstrap made web design easy, it felt almost magical giving you grids, responsive layouts, and pre-built components, right when you needed them. But now, that magic is fading. Newer frameworks are taking over, and Bootstrap faces a tough choice, change to stay relevant or risk being left behind. How did a tool that powered millions of websites end up in this situation, and can it make a comeback? The story of Bootstrap begins with two Twitter developers, Mark Otto and Jacob Thornton. They saw a big problem. Developers and designers weren't on the same page, leading to messy and inconsistent designs on Twitter. To solve this, they built Bootstrap, a tool that made sure things like buttons, grids, and typography looked the same everywhere. For the first time, developers could focus on building features instead of worrying about design. Bootstrap quickly gained traction outside of Twitter. Companies of all sizes adopted it because it allowed developers to create beautiful, functional websites without needing extensive design knowledge. From startups to Fortune 500 companies, Bootstrap-powered websites became the norm. Even educational institutions and government websites benefited from Bootstrap's simplicity, allowing them to build responsive, user-friendly interfaces efficiently. However, came the breakthrough, Bootstrap introduced a mobile-first approach, just as people were using their phones more than computers. This let developers create websites that looked great on any device. What made Bootstrap even more special was that it was open source. Developers from all over the world started adding to it, making it a symbol of teamwork and creativity. But even with all this success, Bootstrap was about to face its biggest challenge yet, one that could change everything. In August 2011, Mark and Jacob launched Bootstrap with a simple goal, to create a consistent, responsive foundation for web design. It started small, offering a basic grid system, typography, and key elements, like buttons and navigation bars. By January 2012, Bootstrap 2 arrived, introducing a more flexible 12-column grid and responsive features like modals and dropdowns that adapted to different screen sizes. But in August 2013, Bootstrap 3 brought a mobile first design with a clean, flat UI and better responsiveness, making it a hit with developers. But despite its early success, cracks started to show. Developers began noticing Bootstrap's heavy CSS and JavaScript bundles, which slowed down websites, even as its huge community shared themes and templates to keep it growing. The framework's core structure struggled to keep up with newer trends like Tailwind CSS. The question became, could Bootstrap continue to evolve fast enough to stay relevant? In 2018, Bootstrap 4 launched with new features to improve reusability. With Bootstrap 4, one of the most notable changes was the introduction of Flexbox for layout design. Flexbox made it easier for developers to create responsive and dynamic layouts. However, it still came with large CSS and JavaScript files, slowing down load times. It also relied on jQuery, which was becoming outdated as modern developers favored frameworks like Vue and React. In 2021, Bootstrap 5 addressed these issues by dropping jQuery, improving performance, and adding utility classes for more flexibility. Despite these updates, the rise of frameworks like Tailwind was hard to ignore. Tailwind allowed developers precise control over their designs without the need for large pre-built components and its utility-first approach. Applying simple classes like P4 for padding or text center for alignment became a favorite for those who wanted more control and cleaner code. While Bootstrap 5 tried to catch up by adding more utility classes, many still found it too rigid and complicated due to its predefined structure and set of components, which limited customizability compared to newer frameworks like Tailwind. Developers looking for simpler, more flexible solutions began moving away from Bootstrap as the utility-first approach of Tailwind offered a more straightforward, modular way to build web interfaces. When comparing Bootstrap and Tailwind, think of it like this. Bootstrap is like ordering fast food, quick and easy to get started with, offering a ready-made structure. However, you're limited in what you can change. Tailwind, on the other hand, is like home-cooked food. It takes more time, but you have complete control over the ingredients, allowing you to make everything exactly how you want. For example, in Bootstrap, a basic button is styled like this. You apply predefined classes like button and button primary, usually from an external CSS file. On the other hand, Tailwind gives you the flexibility to style directly in the HTML. For beginners, Bootstrap seems convenient because it provides a simple, ready-to-use structure. However, as developers gain more experience and begin building unique, scalable UI designs, they often need a more flexible code base that's easier to manage and maintain. Despite the rise of Tailwind and other frameworks, Bootstrap is still widely used, especially for projects where speed and consistency are critical. For instance, many development teams use Bootstrap to quickly prototype new ideas or build minimum viable products. Its out-of-the-box components allow teams to focus on functionality without worrying about custom design. 
Even in 2024, millions of websites, including corporate portals, e-commerce platforms, and personal blogs, are built with Bootstrap. While Bootstrap is still widely used by millions of developers for its ease of use and quick setup, many experienced developers are shifting towards Tailwind. For years, Bootstrap was the go-to framework for developers, transforming web development with its consistent, responsive design. But things have started to change. Bootstrap 5, while an improvement, didn't meet all the expectations. Some developers feel the documentation has lost its clarity, and the overall experience just isn't as exciting anymore. In a world dominated by React and single-page applications, Bootstrap is beginning to feel a little outdated. So, will Bootstrap be left behind, or can it evolve to meet the demands of this new era? Bootstrap may have once been the magic bullet for developers, but as the web evolves, so do the tools we use to build it. There's also the question of how well it can integrate with modern JavaScript libraries. React and Vue have become the backbone of many modern web applications, and while Bootstrap components can be integrated, they often feel disconnected from the component-driven design philosophy of these frameworks. Whether Bootstrap can adapt or not will determine its place in the future of web development. One thing is clear, the competition is fierce, and Bootstrap has to fight harder than ever to stay relevant. Only time will tell if it can reclaim its crown, or if it will slowly fade into the background.